Greetings, Noose Little Pod listeners. This is your host, Matt Gore, reminding you to please like, follow, subscribe, and share the podcast on your available podcast apps such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, iHeartRadio, and any other podcast app you can think of. Share our episodes on Facebook and let us know what you think with a comment or review. Now please enjoy the show. Good evening and welcome to Noose Little Podcast. This is an audio program talking about the backstage antics and stories of running a small town community theater on the banks of the Noose River located in Smithfield, North Carolina. We lovingly refer to the old girl as the Hut. We hope you enjoy. All right, and welcome to another episode of Noose Little Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. I have three special guests for you today on our show. And they are by far the youngest members that are the youngest guests that we've ever had on our show here. And uh, it's the cast of The Outsiders, at least some of them. We didn't have enough mics for everybody. So uh, if you're a little jealous of the other cast that you didn't get on, just know that we had only a limited number of mics. And it is a sound show, so we can't fit everybody in there. Uh, but don't worry. If you're here, if you stick around long enough, your day will come. <laughs> but we're going to start here at my left and uh, introduce yourself and tell us how old you are, ma'am. Hello, my name is Grace Dontremont and I am 16 years old. Awesome. And who do you play in the show? I play Jeannie. All right. And go ahead. I'm Jack Dontremont. I'm 15 years old. I'm the understudy of Pony Boy, but I also play an ensemble named Buddy. Gotcha. Go ahead. Uh, hey guys, my name is Bowen Thompson, and I am 16, and I play Dallas Winston. Gotcha. All right, well, uh, thank you guys for coming uh, and joining us here for the show. I really appreciate it. And just to give everybody a reminder, The Outsiders is going to open up on Friday the 18th, and it's going to run the 18th, 19th, and 20th. That's the first weekend. Uh, Friday and Saturday are 8 p.m. shows with a Sunday 3 p.m. matinee, and it's going to run the next weekend the 25th and 26th that's a friday and saturday show at 8 p.m just call 919-934-1873 and that will lead you to reserving a ticket you have to reserve a ticket with the box office um or the walk-ups we also accept walk-ups if we have room all right and let's just dive right into it you know so we're doing the outsiders here we talked to tony uh on the last episode but i thought it was important to get the cast perspective on this uh, unique show and because it is so much about the cast um, as it were uh, so let's start with you Grace but before we get to the outsiders let's take it back to the beginning let's start with your how you first got to NLT when you first got here my first show was um, Our Town I auditioned for the show not really thinking I was going to get in it was one of my first local community theater shows and I ended up getting stage manager um, it was, like I said, it was one of um, my first shows and I was super excited. I got to work with Matt um, and a few other of the cast members that are in Outsiders right now. Yeah, uh, the character the character of the stage manager is very important in uh, our town as uh, every show has a stage manager. But in our town, the name of the character is actually stage manager and he or she usually narrates the play. In many cases, it's an older man who narrates the play, but Tony uh, made a decision to go with young Grace here as a, a, a little girl that narrates the, the the town in our town that is now escaping me. I knew it would. <laughs> um, Grover's Corner. Grover's Corner. Oh Thank you, Mita. <laughs> Grover's Corner. Um, that was a fun show to do. Very oh, interesting. Yeah. Lots of emotions in that type of show. Yeah, it uh, was really challenging. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Comp- it, was that your last show? What were you in after that? After that, I was in uh, The Diary of Anne Frank. I played oh, yeah. the understudy. Yeah, uh, CST. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and then I did a few, like, uh, kids' version shows. I did Frozen Junior, where I played Wesselton. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and then just some school shows and stuff like that. Gotcha. Now, uh, when you when you saw The Outsiders was going to be one of our shows this, uh, this year, did you tell your mom that you immediately had the audition? I was beyond excited um outsiders is one of my favorite books and i love the movie and it the story means so much to me um so i months like in advance was making sure my mom had cleared away the audition weekend so we had time to audition and it was just i was super excited i definitely told him about that well uh we're excited uh, about having you here um uh now jack 
uh, let's get into your theatrical background a little bit here, sir. What was your first show? Was your first show in ZST, or did you do a show here? Uh, this is my first show here, uh-huh. but I have done shows previously. I was in that Frozen Junior that Grace mentioned. Uh-huh. I was Oaken, who's this merchant. And then I also did A Christmas Story at Center Stage Theater. Uh-huh. And you were I was, the kid, right? Yeah, I was Ralphie in that. You beat me for a best actor. Uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> no, and deservedly so. Deservedly so. Uh, I do, but I do remember I was there when you won. It was much deserved. That was a great show. And that, little Ralphie, that's always, a, that's always a classic role. So well done and congratulations for that. Um, this is your first uh, show in the season for NLT? Uh, yes. Okay, so uh, how did you get here? Did your sister drag you, or is it something you wanted to do, or what? My family dragged me, and I'm not, I've am not. i always never been a, a huge fan of auditions. They just make me nervous, uh-huh. and sometimes I feel like that I can't get into character. So that's a that's like an obstacle to get over with me. But once I've done it, uh, whether or not I get a big part or not, usually that gives me more time to just get into it, and I start getting excited for it. It's like The Outsiders now, I'm incredibly excited for it. Uh-huh. I think it's going to be a good performance and uh, from everyone. Well, I think that's an excellent attitude to look at it because you already uh, you're the understudy for the main character, right? Yep. That's Pony Boy, and uh, so we'll get into more into that in my fur- future questions. But for now, let's go over to Bo. Now, Bo, what's your past theatrical experience? So I actually have never done any huge plays or like community plays like New Little Theater. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> in elementary school, we did a little play, and I played as the Native American chief and that was about it okay so i'm really really pumped to be here because this is a new experience for me and it's an awesome experience especially from cast members and tony it's amazing right we'll get into working with tony here in a little bit um so you guys are all here you're all uh here trying to do this play and i'm on the stage right now the stage looks amazing the the with the chain link fence and the graffiti and all that i can't wait for people to see it but let's talk about the actual characters that inhabit the stage a little bit grace tell us about who you play i am Jeannie. i'm an ensemble member um i'm a soch girl so we are better off money wise um and the soches and the greasers do not get along so um me and my friend serenity are both soches and mm-hmm. as you can tell we do not get along with most of the cast playing greasers now in the book it's, it's just uh it's just guys that were in the soches and the greasers but uh tony has uh, updated the material and i think very uh prudently put uh male and female uh uh characters uh, so what's that like being being part of a, a a unisex gang as it were um it's really exciting to think about how how he did end up like updating everything and I'm I'm really pumped because I usually in plays I usually do play um like snobby <laughs> rich characters um and so it's nice to be able to do it again and I really do like um pretending to be mean because I don't think I'm a mean person in real life but You're I'm, not. Well, <laughs> you, thank don't, you. you don't seem to be mean thank at you <laughs> <laughs> so it's really nice to like kind of put myself out there and do that and kind of be the villain almost mm-hmm. it, through the character's eyes yeah I'm gonna give you just a little piece of advice early on in your acting career the villains are always more fun to play oh I agree with you <laughs> I do I do agree it's with always you. fun to play bad um, so now, Jack, you're the understudy for uh, Pony Boy, right? Correct. All right, now, but you're also an ensemble member, and you and it's Buddy, correct? Yes, he's a greaser. Greaser. Okay. So, what's it like uh, at the same time studying these lines for Pony Boy, but at the same time developing and inhabiting a completely different character? It's a. Uh, it's kind of tough because on one hand, I have to. I'm like, I'm like writing down notes for the main character, but then on the same page, I might have my uh, extra being out, like in a movie theater scene. Mm-hmm. So I have to write the notes for both characters, but it's uh, it's definitely an interesting experience having to memorize both of mm-hmm. my choreography and well, there's not lines for my extra, but for my normal, uh, right. well, for the understudy. Uh, the understudy being Pony Boy is the main character and he goes through a lot in this play mm-hmm. and I, I hope that I can portray that. Yeah. And then the uh, the extra is also just really fun because he's a greaser first of all, and that I feel like that would be more fun than being a soch. No <laughs> offense. Uh, <laughs> Greasers do have the punk rock side of things. Going back to, and the soches are kind of like, I guess what we call what I what 
my generation called them as preps. Do they still call them preps? Yeah, yeah the, I've heard the, the word. Kids. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, boomer. Oh my God. <laughs> Not a boomer. Not a boomer. I'm right on the edge of a millennial. Right on the edge. <laughs> wow. Cutoffs like 82. I was 86, so I'm a millennial. All right. Uh, so, Bo, let's talk about the character you played, Dallas. All right. So, I am Dallas Winston. He is a greaser, and he is a very new person to the greasers because like soda pop for example he's the empathic empathic one mm -hmm. pony boy is the main character and he's different from all the greasers because he likes books and movies Derry, he's the eldest out of all of them and he's kind of like the dad of everyone and then there's just dallas who's like a punk and does whatever he wants and he's just living life to the fullest that he can right now gotcha so he's he's almost an outsider within the outside exactly He's so different from the group, but he's in a group that he belongs with. Almost. Right. Yeah. He's the most fur furthest along to being a juvenile. Dallas is a survivalist, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. He's the one at the. He's the one at the the most fringe uh, member of the group. That's mm -hmm. I interesting. Does he start fights? Is he aggressive? Oh yes, most definitely. Gotcha. And he he does more than just instigate fights. He he does everything. He tries to hit on women. He does everything he wants. Steals cars. Mm -hmm. Threatens doctors, mm -hmm. everything. Threaten doctors, that's very specific. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I have to see that reference in the play. Oh, you just wait for it. I will. I'll be here. Um, Sweet. <laughs> so tell me what it's like, guys, and anybody's free to answer this question. What is it like working with Tony Pender? I know you have at least once before there, Grace. Yes, I have, and I love Tony. I love the way he like approaches things, how he asks you about your character. He's like, what would your character be doing in this situation? And it really helps you to develop like a background and gets you more involved. And he's just, he's amazing. And I'm so glad that he was my first like real director that I had. He was my first director too. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's awesome. So I was, I was like spoiled from the very beginning. Oh yeah. Every, no. ever since then, you know, I'm just like. Right? I'm like, mm. it's too good to be true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do either of you guys want to? I'll say something. Go ahead. So this is my first production I've worked on with Tony. And I can say he is different from other directors. That's not a bad thing though. He he, he leaves it open to interpretation what you think about your character and allows you to make... It, it feels more like you're your character because of this. And he's a very supportive person. Mm. He, uh, you know, I've told him... I've given him updates about, like, memorization that I've done, and he's very supportive about it. He's overall just been... He's a really good director. And... Uh, he he changes the entire experience from when you're up here compared to other directors. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um... It, it uh, Tony Tony's method is is something he has a way of bringing stuff out, especially in, in kids and stuff like that. Since he mainly does work with youths and kids and teenagers and stuff like that. What about you, Bo? Any thoughts about Tony? I love Tony. This is my first play production, basically ever, and he is one of the best directors I have ever talked to or just ever worked with. He, like Grace and Jack, have both said. He makes you envision what it's like to live that life as either mm. a Soch or as Dallas Winston or as Ponyboy. He makes you live in that moment and he makes you feel it. He also makes sure that you think about your character your own way and you're not like reading information off of a book. He's making you think yourself as in like this is partially who you are and partially who whatever character you are is. Mm. It's like... He's making you give your own twist on someone. He's making it more personal, almost. And he's so compassionate and so kind. And he lifts people up. He doesn't talk down to people. He talks to them. And then he supports us and brings us up and really brings out those emotions. And just the spark is what he said. He just brings out the spark out of almost mm -hmm. everyone on this cast. Oh, good way to say it. <laughs> That is. Indeed. Thank you. Uh, does he make you guys uh, do certain scenes over and over again? Most definitely. Yes. yes. <laughs> He's very patient. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that. He's oh, yeah. very patient. I don't know that I could do it. And that's a departure from other shows, right? There's not a uh, whole lot of repetition on it. I mean, there is, but but not yeah, it's like, yeah. stop, do it again. Yeah, know? no, most directors would be like, um, good enough, you know. Yeah. But now, Tony that leads perfect. me to my next point. Like, if you guys do this long enough, 
And you, if you're ever in rehearsal and you're just like, ah, oh, he wants me to do it again. What does he want? What does he want? Just know that one day you're going to miss that because you're mm-hmm. going to be doing a play somewhere else and you're going to move on from a scene and you're going to know it's not right. But with Tony, you know, you would keep doing yeah. until yeah. it's right. And uh, that might seem even like I've seen adults. It, it annoys adults in the moment, but it works so much better because it just doesn't work until it's right. It's like the good, good enough type of thing is something mm-hmm. we try to stay away from and something that even I, as a director, am guilty of. <laughs> so we're all trying to... Yeah improve ourselves because well, <laughs> tony um with about repeating scenes I, i'm i don't know if he said this on the last podcast but i'm pretty sure he did um he was talking about the rumble and how we spent literally three days mm-hmm. specifically mm-hmm. on the rumble and perfecting it it's awesome like everyone who's listening y'all better so strap cool. your seat belts in and get your buckles on because we are gonna Take it to the moon. It's going to be awesome, guys. Can't forget the buckles. Um, <laughs> uh, now, yeah, now, that makes perfect sense because that's the focal point of the entire play. I mean, mm-hmm. it's all about this big fight and stuff and the ending, but we won't spoil that right now. Uh, for those who are not familiar with uh, the book, although it seems unlikely at this point. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So now... When you guys are, what's your guys' typical rehearsal like for the Outsiders? And there might not be such a thing as a typical. What's a what's a day in the Outsiders like from your perspective, Grace? Um, well, usually we have rehearsals, or we used to when we first started the show. We had specific pages set for each day, and we would always, you know, kind of like run through it. You know, he would go back and have us redo it until we got it, till we all felt comfortable. Um, and we would just really focus on those pages. And it was really nice because it was very, like, organized and, you know, you were expecting what was going to happen. Um, now it's mostly we're kind of just running through the whole show and trying to um, make sure our pacing's right and everything. Mm-hmm. And we're, we're actually working backstage now because we used to sit out in the audience and kind of watch. But now we're getting, like, real. <laughs> yeah, you have to know your cues and all yeah. that. Yeah, yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, all right, so, so let me ask you this. Do each of you hop over this thing? Does yes. everybody hop over? At one point, yes. Yeah. Uh, it's very scary. <laughs> I could not do that. Uh, <laughs> the whole thing would come down. But <laughs> that's interesting. So so take me through that because even for teenagers, this is a, do you help each other? You piss each other up? We had to in the start. Um, a couple of us just needed a little bit of help, like a booster or someone uh, just to stand there and help them up and get their feet in places and the holes in the chain link fence. Mm-hmm. And then obviously we would have one person on each side just to make sure if anything mm-hmm. happened, there would be someone to catch them. Um, right now, everyone's perfect. Like we can all jump the fence. We can clear it. It was awesome. Um, but first couple of days, they were mainly scary because I don't know if everyone in the cast has cleared a nine foot fence before. <laughs> But it, it's fun. I love it. It's one of my favorite parts. No, it's 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 gnarly. It looks legit. It's uh, only eight feet. It's eight feet. Oh, oops, sorry. <laughs> to eight be feet. Sure. <laughs> Trying to oversell it, boy. I'm just kidding. Hey. Tony work. is so creative. I was never expecting any of this. So right? I know. Tony, uh, Tony's sets are always very eclectic, and they're always not non-traditional. Uh, one of the coolest set we've talked about it briefly, but I'll tell you guys briefly. One of the coolest sets he's ever done is he did a show called Ordinary People. And Ordinary People is based on a movie back in the 80s. Um, uh, it's about this boy who's going through some mental issues because his brother died and he was there and it was very traumatic. And uh, he has to go to therapy to try to work through that. The whole family is kind of traumatized by the loss of their son. A hot mess. Yeah, everybody's a hot mess. Everybody, and uh, So it's very much a show from the boy's perspective. So he put up kind of this paper mache tubing that was supposed to look like metal pipes. Uh-huh. And in between those metal pipes, we literally went downstairs and took everything we could find and just shoved. And it was supposed to represent the boy's mind, how he's got all this stuff in his head from his past. That's awesome. In between this metal pipes, which are, you know, his brain, his veins, whatever you want to call that it. That sounds wicked cool. That does yeah. sound really cool. Can we talk about the set that we have set up here? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we've made it more of like an interactive type style because like if you can see the fireplace, how there's wooden pallets up against it, uh-huh. that's actually where I sleep. <laughs> <laughs> you sleep in the fireplace? Yep. Okay. <laughs> and then to behind you, Matt, there's two like, there's like a tent of a pallet and then there's one up against the wall. That's where other cast members sleep. 
and it's just we've made it really interactive just so like it can be with the audience i, yeah. I know yes. tony was talking about really breaking that fourth wall mm -hmm. all right all right so you guys have about let's see you guys have about 10 more days of solid rehearsal until you get an audience maybe nine if you, if you if you count the thursday preview now so what's it what's it what's it feel like for you guys are you guys getting nervous but are you guys until you plan it out. yeah right <laughs> <laughs> It's Jack looks as cool as a cucumber. I don't think he's worried at all. Yeah, yeah. he's chilling. Well, it's uh, so it's more of those things where it's like so. Looking back at our first rehearsals, we would spend two hours because that's how much we had on ten pages each day. Right. And now that same two hours, we go over the entire thing. Like we go through the entire thing. Yeah. Maybe he stops it twice. So we've come a long way, and I think we're all at least mostly or somewhat ready. Mm -hmm. Plus, we have an extra week of you know rehearsing. Yeah. I'm not too nervous about it. That's speaking for myself, but I can't speak for everyone, but I think that we have this in the bag. Well, yeah. I like the confidence. I like the confidence. Um, now, as far as your other castmates, who's playing Pony Boy? Um, Wesley. His name is Wesley. Mm -hmm. He's he's really cool. A lo all of our cast members are amazing. It seems like y'all get along. Like, I was talking oh, with Mita, so and oh, Mita my... was impressed about how much you guys get along. You, so need, you need to see what happens before rehearsals. It <laughs> It is like a circus. We are all loud. We're ready. It's Everyone's great. Um, I don't even know if anyone in the cast listens to this podcast, but if any of y'all listening, you're doing great. Like I love, I love this cast. Everyone was meant for the role that they have. T Tony really put the nail down in the mm -hmm. plank of picking who was for which character because a lot of us get along and understand our character really well. So well, that's uh, that's encouraging. Uh, I honestly can't wait to see it. I'll be here the second Saturday. <laughs> Me too, and I'm in it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um. So. Uh, anything on the horizon for you, Grace, after this show? Um, I was going to um, audition for Anne Frank in Wake Forest, I yeah. believe, but it was put on hold for mm -hmm. now. I also um, <laughs> was going to be in Annie, and that was also put on hold. So as of right now, I know that I'm doing a few shows at my school, but nothing really stepping like standing out to me as of right now. Okay. Yeah. Jack, are you going to audition for some uh, future shows here? Uh, well, it's like one of those things where when I see it, if I, if I, if I'm interested, I'll go for it, mm. but I'm kind of just cruising along. <laughs> yeah. You, you see, you seem to be pretty even, even tempered type of dude. <laughs> well, but, uh, like I don't, I haven't at least not yet anyway, gone out of my way to search for much. It's more of just, I found out this is happening and I've been interested in it. So I've given it a shot. Yeah. If it's right, if it's supposed to happen, let it happen, I guess. Yeah. What about you, Bo? Are you interested in doing any future shows, any future theater? So I started out coming here because, funny enough, I found out about Noose Little Theater in general from my English 3 teacher last semester. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and when she was talking to us about it, I got me and a couple of my buddies, and we came to auditions, and a good select few of us, um, yeah, we made it, and we were like, wow, we actually made it. I came in here to enjoy myself and have fun. And I still am, it's amazing, but I just didn't know how much I was gonna love this. And like Jack said, I'm just going with the flow. If there's a show that I wanna do, I'll audition for it and hope I make it. Where do you live there, Bo? Uh, I live all the way out in Zebulon. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm, I'm a ways away, but I go to school just down the road at gotcha. JCC. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, and so does, do you are you the one that seeks out the shows, Grace, or does your mom or like you know the show's coming up? Is that is that a thing with your mom, or is it kind of a back and forth? Usually, my mom is the one who does find the shows, and I do I ask nonstop about what's coming up and all that. Uh, but usually, she is the one that's on Facebook and checking constantly. She's mm -hmm. very excited every time she finds one that like might have a potential part or something like that. Yeah, um, we got someone uh, new taking over the summer drama program uh, this summer. It's Patsy. I know she's done stuff before, mm -hmm. but she's kind of in charge this year. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, so there's going to be some great opportunities for that. We don't do a kids show every year, even though uh, there's definitely some people that always push for it. It just doesn't mm -hmm. happen every year yeah. as far as our selection process. But uh, we always try to have that drama program there. So, uh, you know, it's, it's just a good way to... 
keep the kids involved and stuff like that. And we need you guys. We need you guys. Yeah, because, future actors. Yes, and also just future people, future people to do lights and sound. Future people to help out. This is more to this place than just acting. I, I know. I know. If, uh, it, it, but there, everybody who does, you know, they do stuff for free. Me and Mita are not doing this for money. We've never been paid to do this podcast. You know. <laughs> um, I don't even get gas money. <laughs> um, you started it. I know. I know. I'll have to bring in a sponsor. That's what we got to do. Oh my God. The guy that sells the Winnebago's down by the bay. Oh That's what I was saying. Start some merch. You know, guys, just check out merch link yes, in bio. Yes, yes. Our, 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 our 50 listeners will just love our, our, our exclusive NLT podcast t-shirts. It'll be... Uh, I'd buy one. <laughs> I would too. To Fine. Give me $20 right now. Okay. <laughs> um... <laughs> but no, uh, but in all seriousness, we need you guys, the future generation, to come back to the theater and be involved and and help us because none of none of us. I am the youngest member on the board. None of us are getting <laughs> none of us are getting any younger. <laughs> I'm 35. <laughs> so that future generation is very important. And Grace and Jack and Bo, if if it matters to you at all, just you know, go out and live your life. But if you're here. Don't forget us, you know what I mean? Oh, of course. Oh, I'm definitely going to check out guys, NLT more often. Yeah, it's made such a big impact on mm. my life already. Yeah? So, yeah, I'm definitely. Countless others. Just that. literally hundreds of other, other people can say the same thing. Yeah. About how much has changed their life. But um, before we close it out, is there anything that you want to particularly say uh, before we leave things? Anything at all? I know that's kind of open-ended. <laughs> <laughs> anything about the show? Just come see it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I don't think you'll have a problem with that. I think you guys will get uh, decent audiences. Um, and you guys have uh, stayed healthy. So <laughs> Most definitely. We're going to keep up that trend. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, so just as a reminder to our listening audience, The Outsider is opening up. Uh, as of the, it'll, When this episode's debut, it will be opening day. So it'll be February 18th. And it'll be going up February 18th on, at 8 p.m., February 19th at 8 p.m. and February 20th at 3 p.m. That's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then the following Friday, the 25th at 8 p.m. And then Saturday, the 26th at 8 p.m. So just call 919-934-1873 to make a reservation. Uh, tickets are 13 with, a reservation. 13 with a reservation, 15 at the door. And we do not accept debit cards, so uh, bring cash or check. Isn't that what they used to call them back in the day? Checks. Yeah, yeah checks. Yeah, I think that's what they're called. <laughs> what do they call it now? Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not used. <laughs> do you know what a checkbook is? Yes. Yes, I know what a checkbook yes. is. <laughs> we're young, but we're not that young. <laughs> it's like, did they use, did they have even concept of what a I've check, ever used one. <laughs> checkbook is? I don't think I need to. When you, you open up so when you open up your first bank account, they'll like give you a couple and you'll feel important for like five minutes. Oh know? yeah, that's not it though. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'll never use it again. <laughs> yeah, my dad just grabs a checkbook and he just starts writing in it like it's another day at work. It, it's, he's probably balancing it, which nobody ever does anymore because computers do it for you, but some people like to do it themselves. Yeah, he always balances the checkbook. Interesting. Yeah, just go online and look what my balance is. I don't have to do more. All right. <laughs> Can I afford Zaxby's tonight? Yes. All right. Good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, I really thank you for your time. Um, I'm going to let you guys go and start your rehearsal, even though it's uh, we got about 30 minutes in. Uh, Grace, thank you so much for your time. Oh, thank you. And uh, break a leg with your performance. You. Jack, I appreciate you being here, buddy. Thank you for having me. Uh, break a leg, man. I have no doubt that if you need to step in as Pony Boy, you'll knock it out of the park. There's no doubt in my mind at all. And Bo, you seem to be a spirited kid. I like you. I want to see more of you. Appreciate it. I'm <laughs> and, uh, so pumped for this show, and thank you for having me. This was a blast. But uh, in all seriousness, thank you guys for being here. I appreciate your time, and you guys break a leg. Thank you. I'm gonna appreciate enjoy it. I hope you thank enjoy you. the show. Oh, uh, I'm going to be here. Don't you worry. Oh, well. Let's go. All right. <laughs> all right. We're going to put a pin in it there, folks, for this little podcast. I am Matt Gore, and also for my producer, Media Tool, we wish you a good evening. Thanks for listening. Bye. Say bye, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Credits for the show. Your host and creator is Matt Gore. That's me. My producer and editor is Mita Tool. That's me. Music is by Cody Walker. Uh, please go look up Cody on uh, Cody Walker Music on youtube and he's also on cody walker music on facebook as well he's local so uh and he's got a couple of albums out you know uh 
easy listening John John Denver type of uh, guitar voice that Cody Walker. All right, thanks for listening. We'll talk to you later. Bye bye.